Hi everyone and welcome to Shed Talk and this is our live steam locomotive that we've recently bought during COVID lockdown. When I say we, I mean I bought during COVID lockdown. So I bought this steam locomotive and as far as I knew it was in operating uh, condition but it came from a deceased estate and it no longer had a boiler ticket so it was an unknown. I took it to my club, we had the boiler um, checked by the local boiler inspector, it passed with flying colours and was reissued with a new ticket. From then I took it to a private railway where you can see the footage coming up now and you can see that this little locomotive is struggling to haul my big butt up this incline and this is with, well at the bottom of the hill we started with full boiler pressure, just when I passed the camera I'm literally down to 20 pounds of um, steam pressure and you can hear the exhaust beat it isn't nice and square there's something going on that shouldn't be um, there's something going on that's not right with the, the valve settings so I took the locomotive home and I took the valve chests off and uh, we had a look down and you can see by the ports the way that they're opening they're not opening in equal um, transition so basically one port's opening more than the other so then we turned around and when we applied a bit of air pressure to the um, boiler um, you can see here we found another steam leak which was up in the smoke box end which would have been the reason we were using so much steam during the first time we steamed the little locomotive up so in an essence this video is about me getting this little locomotive up and running to how it used to be because I can tell you the workmanship on it is good it's just a few things aren't right on it and one of the things that we notice is this return crank here is completely worn and all our valve timing and the way that the valve is set is not correct all right guys if this is something you're interested in don't forget to hit the subscribe button and let's get into ripping this locomotive down It's essential that we make sure that everything comes off and goes back in the same place so that the original builder, if they've made any alterations, we know that they're going to go back and perform exactly how they were meant to. So that's one. Yeah, it's a good opportunity, I suppose, to get in here and give everything a bit of a, a bit of a clean. Okay, so I've been really, really fortunate in the sense that I haven't needed to drop the full wheel set out. Um, here's the original original uh, keeper and this is our spring here and you can see that you can see here with my finger but it doesn't take much to compress that so I've got a couple of options I've got this spring here and a slightly thicker one oh, that I can try so um, yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do next is try these and see how they work. So I was having a look around to try and find a thicker spring, which I did, which is this guy here. And it's literally double the thickness. And then I was looking at the distance between the coils and I immediately realized that I'm not going to get the adjustment that I need out of it before this spring eventually binds up. So... When I was at the hardware store, I was having a look at some springs and the selection isn't as big as what I wanted. But what I did discover was a perfect fit. 
So I'm going to see if this spring can work like a, a, a double coil. Um, you know, it works on valve springs on automotive applications. So I thought, why not try it on this? So the next thing I'm going to do is reassemble everything. And uh, I'm going to try it with the double spring to see if we can firm up the reaction of the rear axle so that it settles down the um, valve setting and gives us more consistent timing. Um, and then we can go back to the crank to verify what's happening. Because at the moment, I'm juggling between setting one side and then I set the other side and then that changes the original side, if that makes any sense. But anyhow, this is what I'm going to do. This is one of the reasons why I've got so much red marker everywhere is because the red signifies this side. So I know that I'm going to be putting this in the correct orientation. One of the reasons I ended up pulling everything apart was it turns out the original builder had constructed the um, axles with needle needle bearings in in this area here and I wanted to make sure that I've got all the dirt and grime and everything else like that out of there already tell this is going to be a bit of a headache a bit of a juggling act So the original issue was that this return crank here on both sides had shifted and that had thrown the timing out on the locomotive which would explain the reason why it ran so poorly. So I've removed everything, I've scribed lines, that's why we've got so much dye, red dye everywhere and I've been able to reinstate all the parameters to how it should be and um, I'm quietly confident with this crank return crank pin now repinned, reamed, and it's now got a tapered pin in there with a um, rub screw to, to make sure that nothing falls out. Um, yeah, I'm confident now that it will run on compressed air. Now I've got everything um, set up with the suspension. I'm going to reset the valves and hopefully, fingers crossed, this will settle down our forward and also allow us to fine tune and get reverse because since purchasing this locomotive it didn't run properly in forward and it definitely had no reverse so hopefully we, this will rectify those problems so now i've done everything i've set the valves i've got the ports where i think that they're close to being equal they're slightly biased to the rear port and the idea being that once it's full of water, it will be spot on to being perfect. But regardless, the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. So if I open the regulator now and put it in forward, hopefully the engine will run. And I'm quietly confident it will run. Open the regulator. And that's what we want to see. It's running smoothly. It never ever ran like that. And 
the proof that I really need is reverse. I never had reverse when purchasing this locomotive. So if I can go into reverse, then I'm a happy man. So I'm quietly confident now that this will run even better on steam because this is on compressed air. Um, it doesn't have the expansion properties obviously that steam does to smooth everything out. And um, yeah, to say I'm not happy, that's an understatement. I'd say that that's spot on. That's a win from me. Okay, guys, that's it. Um, the only thing left to do is in part two, I suppose, we'll do a episode of steaming up the little sweet pea and putting it through its steam trial. And hopefully we'll see a major improvement than we uh, previously had witnessed. Um, if this is something that you enjoy, please subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. And have a look at a few of our other videos that we've built. Um, who knows what I'm going to build next. It's totally random. Till next time, take care. That's me.